Hi everyone. So the next few videos that I'm going to be posting are going to be about basic web apps. So what I mean by basic web apps is that we're going to be doing specifically the front end side of things. So what this means is a few terms you might have heard of. We're going to talk about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, things like this. And what these are are technologies that are run in the browser. It'll be more clear what this means when we get to some actual topics later on. But for now, just know that this portion of the talk is going to be about the front end technology. So we're not going to be talking about storing things in a database or actually dynamically loading pages. That'll all be happening in the next week's talks or the next lecture series on advanced web apps. Now, this video is just going to be about how the internet works. And what I mean by that is, let's say that I go to facebook.com. So facebook.com, what just happened when I went there? So the first thing that happened is that I typed in this URL, https www.facebook.com. But what you have to ask yourself is, what does that URL actually mean? Because when I typed it in there, it ended up giving me this entire web page with all of these things. So the truth of the matter is, is that that URL or that domain is actually a mask for something we call an IP. So we have facebook.com and I go to that on my computer. So let's say this is my computer and it's a laptop, so I'm gonna make it look like that. So when I go to facebook.com, what that is is a mask for an IP address. Now an IP address is something you probably have not heard of or you've heard of it but you don't know what it means. But essentially an IP address is like a home address on any home. It basically is a address to a computer. So if I wanna see the IP address to this computer, I just go to Google and I type in my IP. And of course, Google knows everything so they know that my IP address is this long number with some letters in there. More usually IP addresses are four three digit numbers or three, four numbers separated by periods. But basically, Facebook.com is really standing for some IP address. And the IP address that it's standing for is the IP address of Facebook's servers. So you can imagine that somewhere, I don't know, in like North Dakota, Facebook has some server. So this is like Facebook's server. And when I go to Facebook.com, basically the internet says, oh, that actually stands for this IP address, which is located over there. So then it goes to this server somewhere in Arkansas and says, yo, can I get Facebook.com? The server does its thing, it loads and it does all of the stuff. And then finally it says, okay, here it is. And then returns it back to my IP address. So when we go from, when I type in Facebook.com, it basically makes a request to a computer on an IP address somewhere, which then returns all the data to load the page to my computer. So now the question is, what data actually gets sent when facebook.com actually returns the data to my computer? So let's actually see and take a little closer look. So if I do view page source on this page by right clicking, then I look and I see all of these things that looks a little bit like code. So what this is, is actually the HTML which encodes this page. So it turns out that when you make a request to a server, the server sends back a few different things. One thing it sends back is HTML. This is going to be what actually says what's on the page. So HTML describes the actual elements on the page, like here's a button, here's a input, here's a paragraph, here's a text. That's all in the HTML. But the thing is, is that just raw HTML it wouldn't look very good. So additionally to HTML, they also send over what we call CSS. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. And what it is, is essentially a way for us to define how the, the things on the page should look. So if HTML says what's on the page, CSS says, let's make the page look pretty. Now the last thing that we need, now that we have a page that looks like this and that has all these things on it, is we need to be able to say, okay, when I click on this button, make this thing hover, or make it go to this separate page. All of that is defined in the JavaScript. 
So the last thing that the server sends us is JavaScript. The JavaScript defines how the user interacts with the page. So once again, the HTML is what's on the page, the CSS is make it pretty, and the JavaScript is how does the user interact with the page. And these are the three main front end technologies. And once again, it should be a little bit more clear what I mean by that, because these are all files which are sent by the server to our client's computer and which are run in the browser. So the browser takes all of those files and essentially displays and renders the web page for us. So throughout these next few talks, we're going to be looking at each of these individually and see how they all play together to make our own personal website. Cool. So that's it for this. The next video is going to be on actually getting ourselves set up and exactly what we're going to be doing.